Just testing the microphone. We'll be going live here in another five minutes. Well, we are already live, but we'll give the official start here in another five minutes. Can somebody give me a shout out in the in the uh, comments to make sure that you can hear me all right? And I'll put myself up on the screen. See, here I am. <laughs> Let me know if you can hear me. Great. Thank you, Scott. Thank you, Eric. Sound is live. Excellent. I'm going to mute myself for just a uh, few more minutes, and I'm going to address people who are here, but we'll get started in just a few. Hopefully, you're enjoying the bird show this morning. Quite a lot going on. Hey, Rick, can you get it on the uh, ground here, the big flock on the ground, and I'll switch it over to that. Well, it wasn't that fun. We, we Rick just went through all the work of getting the uh, camera on the, the siskin flock on the ground, and then the squirrel came in and, and uh, chased it away. Oh, yep. <laughs> and, and Rick has given me hand signals. Good morning and welcome to Coffee with the Birds. I'm addressing two crowds here this morning. Uh, first, the online crowd there. A uh, special welcome to you. This is the official live stream version of Coffee with the Birds for February 12th, 2012. 21. I've got Rick, Rick uh, signaling me so my brain all of a sudden kind of glitched. 2022. <laughs> that is the year it is. <laughs> 
2022. Um, and uh, I am going to put myself in there. Hello. Good morning to everybody. I think that's what he was signaling me about. <laughs> I am actually at the controls here a bit too. So thank you for your patience while you're waiting uh, for me to get the camera straight and things. Um, but uh, I can address you. I can even address you like this. Whoa. But I think you'd rather see this. All the birds. Um, and uh, so a special welcome to all of you. We're going to give you a, a minute. I see there's 16 of you out there right now. Um, and uh, okay. Yeah, the sound should be back now. I, I muted myself, Scott. So that's that was what was going on there. While I was addressing the crew in here, I, I muted myself. So I'm back now. I'll be live and and uh, uh, with sound for the rest of the, the presentation here. But then we've also got a crew in here. We've got one, two, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Well, counting me, 15, 16. Ooh, it's 17 online. It's 16 in person. Who will win? So, <laughs> and we've got good mornings from Janet Dykstra. I think I know who that person is. <laughs> Good morning, Mom. <laughs> and, uh, good morning from Carl and Judy in Western Park Township. Lots of Siskins here, too. Uh, about 90. Okay. We got to beat you on the... Okay, can you get it underneath the feeders at the back side there? So you can show... Our Rick, I'm talking to Rick now. We've got a nice big flock of Siskins here, too. We're gonna get it on there, and you can—you don't have to zoom all the way in, just kind of wide, so that you see the whole flock there. Okay, get ready, Carl and Judy. There's our there's our flock of siskins. I I don't think it's 90, but we've got a lot of siskins underneath. Oh, there they all go. Not all, but most. And then we've got the uh, morning doves over here too. If you want to pan to the to the uh, morning doves there so that they, the online crew can see all the birds that everybody else is seeing. Um, uh, a good morning from Pamela Alva Steffler. Uh, good morning, bird friends. The bird and squirrels are very busy at my feeders this cold, crisp morning. Excellent. I love that people out there online are enjoying birds at their own feeders while they're enjoying the company online. Um, and the birds at our feeders. So that's that's really great. Welcome. Good morning, everybody from Barb. Welcome. And if anybody online, um, I am right here on the computer. So if you have questions and you want to interact, this is your time to do that. So please do ask questions and I'll address them as best as I can. But before I do that, um, I do want to say, um, like I already did say, welcome to Coffee with the Birds and give a little explanation of what Coffee with the Birds is, both for the live audience in person and also live stream. This is an informal time for us to enjoy birds, to enjoy community, uh, to enjoy coffee and donuts. Hopefully you have some out there. If you have some coffee and donuts out there, let us know what are you eating this morning. Um, I had a nice Valentine's donut with some cherry frosting. It's gone already, but uh, I do have some coffee going on, and uh, we do here as well. And what this time is, is it's not structured in that I have a certain thing to talk about right now. This is a time for us to interact as a birding community, those who love birds, whether it's just the backyard birds at your feeder, or you have been a birder for 40 years and, and go birding wherever you go, kind of like me. Um, and, and uh, it's just a time for us to get together and enjoy each other's company and the birds. And for me, I, I can field questions about bird sightings, uh, feeding birds. Um, you can tell me your, your, your recent bird sightings, uh, things like that. Anything bird related, bird news. If you've got something to share with everybody, you can do that. Um, we've got good morning from Doug and from Linda. Good morning to both of you. We're up to 21 online. And we've got a question here. Yeah. There, how do you tell the difference between the goldfinch and the pine siskin? Okay, the question here in the live audience 
um, in-person audience is how do you tell the difference between a pine siskin and an American goldfinch? Well, if you look at feeder number one, oh, thanks guys. It just flew off. Actually, if you look at, at the feeder in the upper left, two, two is what we need. There we go. These are pine siskins. Pine siskins are the same size as an American goldfinch. Um, and actually, we've got a goldfinch on number four as well. Um, we've got both of them. I'm going to switch it back to... So if you look at the upper left corner of your screen, there's goldfinch is the bottom left. I have to reverse my view here. Bottom left, um, solid colored with black wings and white wing bars. And it's got a little bit of golden yellow in the face. The males have more yellowish in the face than the females in the winter. Um, they will turn a bright yellow color um, starting next month. Um, and, and by April, the end of April, they're generally bright yellow. Um, but it, during the winter, they look like this. The pine siskin looks consistent through the year, but they've got a streaked back. You can see the streaky back on the, and I'm going to switch it back over to, no, not number one. There we go. These are pine siskins. Um, on feeder number three, for those of you in the audience here, uh, they have a lot of streaks on the back and a lot of streaks on the breast, and you can see the yellow flashes in the wing. You can see the primaries, especially of these couple birds here, and in the tail. You can see the yellow in the tail feathers there. Um, and uh, But they feed on much the same thing. They have very similar behaviors to American goldfinches. However, we only see them in, the, in migration and in the wintertime here. We generally don't have them nesting in our area. But if you go up into northern Michigan, you can find them nesting there um, and up into Canada, of course, as well. This year, we've had a huge eruption, especially within the last week or two, um, to our feeders here. And it sounds like to Carl and Judy's feeders, too. Um, lots of siskins around and a lot of fun to have them. Oh, yeah, you can see the bright, bright yellow in the, in the feathers there. So does that help answer your question? Yeah. Yep. Streaky version of a goldfinch is one of the better ways to, to do it, to, to say it. So coffee with the birds. Um, the way this is going to be formatted this morning is that uh, we're going to have, there we go, go back out to the other views. Uh, we got a cardinal on number eight and a downy woodpecker on the suet feeder. Um, and I interrupt for the birds, so I'll try to get myself back on track as I can. Um, the format is we're going to do this live stream until about 1020 or just a little after 1020, 1025. I'll try to wrap it up by about 1020 um, because then I am going to be doing a live in person birding tidbit story, birding story in the great room here at the Nature Center. And so the live stream will end by by 1030. We'll probably let it run for a little while without audio so that you can see. But then Rick will need to uh, tear down the setup. Um, but at that time, at 1020, a video is actually going live um, on this very YouTube channel. Um, uh, excuse me. In your, you can click to it in the, in the uh, email that I sent out. I'm going to try to get a link also in the, in the uh, comments here if I can do that uh, while I'm also doing this. Um, but there'll be a video version of the tidbit story. Uh, that I'll make available for all of you to watch that are out there online. Lots of goldfinches on number four now. So now you can see the bright golden faces on those goldfinches, the kind of olive back and, and face, and the really black wing, wings with white wing bars. So that's kind of the format. Um, after the presentation, I will be coming back into the great into the uh, wildlife den here for another in-person only feeder watching session. We will not be back online at that time. But uh, I'm gonna, I've got to wake up my computer over here. There we go. Before we get, and actually, that's my computer. Here is what I need to show you real quickly. Um, it's an informal time to enjoy coffee, pastries, bird community. 
but um, we'll talk feeder ID, questions, curiosity, stories, birding tidbit presentation, and thank you to our sponsors, okay? Um, our sponsors today include Sympatico Coffee, who has donated the coffee, the Friends of Ottawa County Parks, who has helped to donate the, the uh, hot drinks that we have here, the other hot drinks besides the coffee, Kestrel Imagery, and that others may know, that's Rick Veldman. He's got all the tech stuff going on um, to make this possible. So a big thank you to him. Uh, that others may know is a great business that helps to document family life history stories that can be passed on. So he does documentary style interviews um, for families of uh, loved ones. And so uh, check him out online. Um, and then also a Washtenaw Islands Audubon Society. They also have donated for the feeders, uh, for bir bird food at the feeders. And last but not least, mug club members. Raise your mugs if you're a mug club member, whether you're here in person or online. Thank you so much, mug club members. Here's the mug, 2022 mug. Thank you, Doug Kuiper, for your wonderful photo of a red-headed woodpecker, which will be the subject of the tidbit next month. Um, and uh, through your memberships, you help to sponsor this program and feeding the birds here at the Nature Center. And there they are, all happy. I do want to tell you, I've been given this, this question before, and to directly address it now, I've added up receipts since uh, November when I made the first purchases uh, for this program and uh, for seed and I've been going to Debrine Seed in Zealand and we have we are we have incurred a cost of over five hundred dollars for seed at the feeders this winter already and I need to go back and get more so your sponsorship I'm telling you it really helps us to fit that bill and continue feeding the birds here and that feeder in the upper left there it was full at 8 30 this morning when I filled it Okay, so that's why we are spending $500 or more already this season on seeds. So we really appreciate your support. If ever you do uh, step by uh, DeBrines um, and want to uh, pick up some seed for us, uh, we'd love donations too. We've received donations uh, of, of seed. If you have any questions on what kind of seed we feed, uh, feel free to ask. And um, we, we love your involvement any way that you can be involved. So, I got to catch up on the comments here. Pam. Oh, we got American tree sparrow. I don't think we've got that one on camera yet. Tree sparrows and juncos on the ground here, along with some siskins and, and uh, goldfinches. I think Rick is, is working on that. We'll get you that here in a minute. So, we've got siskins, goldfinches, downy woodpecker, uh, we, uh, number two, there we go, American tree sparrow. <laughs> of course, flies away. Um, well, well, we caught it. We got it on camera for you. So um, we've had red-breasted nuthatch, morning dove, uh, cardinal was over there. Yep, lots of different species of birds. We had a pileated, there's the red-breasted nuthatch on the suet feeder right now. You can see the bottom left feeder, red-breasted nuthatch. Female cardinal on number eight, just flew off. Siskins on number one, and we've got a mixture of siskins and goldfinches on number four, which is, oh, there's the red-breasted nuthatch, in and out. The goldfinches and, and, and siskins like to come in and eat and gorge themselves, whereas a lot of the other birds come in, grab a seed, and go. Okay, let me catch up here. I'm enjoying, oh, Pam says... I'm enjoying homemade cinnamon sugar fried tortillas. Ooh, that sounds good. Everybody in the audience here is going, ooh. <laughs> What's Pam's phone number? We're going to invite her over, right? <laughs> Paul and Diana Hugo, uh, thank you for live streaming. We enjoy visiting our Michigan birds. Excellent. Thank you. Welcome to you as well. And Lola, this is, uh, oh, hi, Paula from mom. I'm watching from Oklahoma. All right. <laughs> well, hello. It's good to see you out there. Thank you for watching from Oklahoma. Any, any uh, owls out there? Right. <laughs> That's excellent. Um, 
And uh, Pamela says, glad the goldfinches and siskin were next to each other. Makes it much easier to see the difference. Yeah, th it is nice when that happens. And uh, speaking of which, oh, and there's a, a white-breasted nuthatch. Uh, he's headed for maybe the suet. Come on, go to the suet. We want you to go to a feeder so that everybody can see you. He's, he's, oh, there he is. He's on the tray and gone. <laughs> but uh, he was there for a sec. I know we caught him then. Um, and, uh, oh, earlier, we started the live stream early without sound because there was a pileated woodpecker on our number five suet feeder. Anybody out there see the pileated woodpecker? Were, they, were you online to see that? Um, it came in while the audience was building in the room here and ate at the uh, number five suet feeder. Not the one in your view right now, but the one up close to the window. And so for a little bit, we actually had the smallest woodpecker in North America and the largest woodpecker in North America, if you don't believe the ivory build is still around. Um, and they were both feeding on the feeder at the same time. And that was quite a sight. So if you didn't see that, when this video is archived, when we stop the stream, you can go back to the beginning and see, because right when we start the stream is when that uh, pileated woodpecker is on the feeder. I'm going to take advantage of the opportunity now with the birds having flushed. Rick is actually looking for the hawk. He's managing a camera over there, and I'm kind of managing things on the computer over here. And, and so we're doing it a little bit differently so far. I think it's going good. Um, and what I want to do is, is uh, to honor somebody right now. Well, we've got a white-breasted nuthatch, number one. Many of you maybe are not aware of um, the news from the birding community that um, we lost a beloved member of the birding community. And um, that is Dick Baker. And many of you maybe knew Dick or went on a bird walk with, with Dick uh, through Ottawa County Parks. He was a great friend and a, just a wonderful person. He was the most kind and generous and soft-spoken um, friend that you could ever meet. And he was a big loss to a lot of us, as you can see by the picture in the middle there. He was a friend to everybody. And this, this man, he is an icon of Grand Haven. If you know Baker Lumber, um, that's uh, his family's business. Um, so he retired from running things at, D at Baker Lumber, and he showed up at the Nature Center here probably about eight, nine years ago. And he said, I've always liked birds, and I'm retired, and I'd love to do some birding. And the rest is history. Um, and uh, Cindy's got one of the nice little stickers that they were handing out at the memorial service. Um, that says, be more like Dick Baker, because he emulated much of what I think everybody aspires to be. He was such a wonderful, giving, kind, gentle person that when you were with him, you felt like you were the center of the world. And he's going to be sorely missed. I put some of these pictures up there. He was a Mug Club member, faithful. And uh, he, he uh, last year, he sent us in this, uh, his mug shot. Um, here's a picture of him on, on our Mug Club membership walk. Uh, um, and uh, Carl, you're in the background there. And then this is his grandson in the picture in the bottom right of the screen. And um, I received an email a number of years ago with this, with this picture attached. And that's his grandson. And he wrote just the cutest little note to his bumpa, to Dick, about how he loves birds. And, and uh, you can just see by the look on his face, him looking at this book, that birding and the passion that that was for him was generational um, to his kids and to his grandkids. And that is something we all can aspire to be too, is to make what we love and enjoy something that everybody around us loves and enjoys too. And so um, let's raise our mugs to Dick Baker. You're gonna be missed, um, but not forgotten. And hopefully never forgotten in the way that we love each other as a, as, a, as a community of birders and beyond. So thank you, Dick, for the gift that you gave us of being a part of our lives um, for the last number of years. Well, the birds are returning to the feeders. And uh, 
I'm being told to, oh, there we go. I got the hand. <laughs> the, the American tree sparrows are just giving you, giving you heck this morning. Um, but uh, I'll go back there. Now you can zoom out. But uh, American tree sparrow um, got the hand signal from Rick on what what uh, camera to go go to. Um, is there anybody out there that has a question, or anybody in here that has a question, comment, bird sighting, anything? Um, but what we're seeing here at the feeders or uh, in your own yards. Yes. I had a treat this morning when I got up. My, I think have a barred owl or maybe two that live in the woods beside behind my house. And it's really weird that my course, but this morning I had a blue bird that looked at him sitting just back um, over my road entrance. And that was about um, 7.30 in the morning or so. Excellent. <laughs> so Lynn, Lynn is telling us about seeing the barred owl this morning at her yard at about 7.30. And of course, when you get the camera, the bird knows and flies off. But uh, excellent sighting for the morning. That's a great way to start off a coffee with the birds in the morning, isn't it? Ah, thank you for sharing. There's a tufted titmouse on one and out. They love the, the peanuts that I throw in the uh, tray feeder there. Anybody else have questions or stories or sightings, anything bird related? Oh, number two, I'm getting it. The, there we go. We've got sis, siskin and some goldfinches. Oh, wow. So 20, uh, 20 morning doves at a feeder. We've got a story here. That's a lot of morning doves and all on the ground, I suppose. They don't, they don't mostly on the ground. Yeah. They'll eat, uh, they're one of the few, oh, we got a blue jay coming in down below the tray feeder here. I'm going to, if he goes to the tray feeder, you can, well, Rick is, is on it, right? <laughs> No pressure, Rick. He's gone. Of course. There was a blue jay. And, uh, yes? I, I have a question for you in a minute. Um, and that's about cedar waxlings. Okay. Um, I'm seeing around that people are seeing some. I haven't seen any. And okay. I wonder, you know, are other people, you know, are they being seen here? Okay, we've got another question about cedar waxwings. Um, I had one more thought on, on the morning doves. I just wanted to say, and then I'll, I'll address that. As far as morning doves, they, they love to feed on the ground, crack corn, and they're one of the few birds that will actually eat the milo <laughs> that, that's in your mixed uh, seeds. Um, and uh, being told, oh, there we go. Morning doves, oh, how appropriate. Thank you, Rick. Look at that. So we got morning doves. You can see they're feeding on our ground feed, which is millet mixed with cracked corn and black oil sunflower seeds. But they do prefer to feed on the ground. They will be up at feeders as well. Um, but uh, just a nice addition. They tend to be very wary as well. So they're one of the first birds to flush. So if you get them at the feeder, when you got a crowd of people, you know that the crowd of people are doing a good job keeping quiet and still and all the rest. Um, so to address the question of the cedar waxwings. The question is, have I been seeing cedar waxwings around here? Um, she's uh, been seeing reports of them, but uh, not seen any herself. And that's pretty typical um, for cedar waxwings. They are very nomadic, very nomadic. And um, that means that they're here and then gone again um, and, and moving about the landscape in larger flocks. And when they do that, then, then you kind of have to cross paths with them. And and best way to do that is to know where you've got a lot of local, locally a lot of berries, a lot of berry trees, crab apples, um, mountain ash, things like that. And to check those frequently um, because that's what they feed on mostly is, is uh, the berry trees. And uh, I actually beat Rick on the hand signal there. I have to feel good about myself there. He said, switch it to four because the, the birds were dispersing out of the camera and I beat him to it. He's laughing at me. Um, and so 
that's the best way to see cedar waxwings in the winter is to go where the berries are. Um, have I seen them here? I think I heard one, but we don't have a ton of the berry trees right near the nature center. So I might, I might have heard one flying over at, 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 uh, at one time, but, um, um, oh, look at that. That's some nice camera work there, Rick. Beautiful. We've got it on the American Tree Sparrow. Those of you in the audience, you can see what he's got in the camera by looking down in front of Rick on the floor there. That's what everybody's seeing online right now. Gotta love that. And, you know, I just have to say on this note, the American Tree Sparrow, even though I don't mention it in the video, um, even though I don't mention it in the video presentation that will be coming up at 1030, that tree sparrow is in it. See if you can hear an American tree sparrow during some of the footage that I have in the video, um, because I was in a place where they actually breed, and and uh, you can hear them singing. And I actually heard one singing the other day right here at the Nature Center, which was kind of early for them to start singing. They don't breed here. They're a wintertime visitor only, and usually late, late winter, you'll sometimes hear them do their twinkling little, beautiful little song, um, but... Uh, you know what, I, I know what I can do, and I'm gonna do that too. I have a microphone, and I have a phone, and I'm gonna play the, the little song of the uh, tree sparrow for you. Uh, and then I'm gonna catch up with some comments here, because I, I realize I've got to, got to do that. Oh, switch it to two. Okay, here's the tree sparrow singing. It kind of descends, sweet descending song. So see if you can pick that out of the video. And those of you who are here in person for the presentation um, should be able to hear it too. But these guys breed way north. Um, here, this is where they breed. <laughs> I'm showing it on the camera there. Way up in Canada. Um, and then they migrate through Canada down into the United States for the winter. Canada and Alaska. Yes, Alaska. So Alaska may be a part of the presentation today. Just a hint, hint, you know. <laughs> um, so I'm going to catch up with some of the comments here. Uh, Laura added a fox sparrow to the yard list this week. So that was pretty exciting. Excellent. Fox Sparrow down there in, in uh, Oklahoma. That's exciting. Martin Camp says, should we all be taking precautions so birds don't get sick via feeders? What should we all be doing? That's a hard one. But yes, yeah, sometimes um, you can see, especially the finches can get a, an eye disease. And if that's the case and, it, and you see it spreading, it's a good idea to, to wash your feeders or to take them down for a while until they disperse because they can more easily spread disease at, at your feeders. Um, so you do want to be aware of that. So watch your feeders. If you get, get a lot of uh, eye-encrusted goldfinches or siskins in particular, um, good idea to take them down for a little bit and, and uh, let those birds disperse. But uh, washing the feeders always helps too. Uh, so Oh, Barb says, sorry I'm late. We've been having a large flock of birds eating a lot of sunflower seeds. Do you say they're siskins? I see a lot on yours too. Yes, oh, we just had the blue jay. Blue jay is going to come in probably to the tray feeder. Yep, there he is on the tray feeder right below me here. Hi. Hey, blue jay. <laughs> there he goes. Um so yes, we've been seeing a lot of pine siskins on our feeder barb. Uh, they're the streaky looking goldfinches. They, they're about the same size as the goldfinches. They're mixed in with the goldfinches. There's a goldfinch on the upper left feeder there, uh, bright yellow in the face. If you see one that's more brown and that there, there's the siskins. I knew it would just take a moment. They're, they're very streaked on the breast and streaked on the back with yellow in the wings and at uh, the sides of the tail. We've also got a cardinal. Oh, and he just, she just flew. Um, 
Carl and Judy said they had two red poles this morning. Lucky you. I had a red pole yesterday evening while we were setting up. Rick can attest to this, but I have not seen it yet this morning. So keep a lookout for a common red pole. Um, has a little red patch on the head here. It's about the same size as the goldfinches, or it's more like a siskin. They're pretty small. They've got a yellow beak and a black face mask. Um, the males have a rosy breast and streaks on the side. They're a little frostier looking than the, than the pine siskins. So, um, but be on the lookout for the, for the red pole. And if you see it online and I just happen to be not looking, you let me know. Let's see. We've got Joe saying we live right next to Coast Guard Park and we have been having bluebirds visit every day at our mealworm feeder. Excellent. Excellent. That's a fun thing to have in the wintertime is bluebirds. And you're feeding exactly the right thing for bluebirds in the winter, mealworms. We've got a mealworm feeder here. Um, and, and Rick, if you're not on anything in particular, you can, you can put it on that so people can see it online. But mealworms, they're dried mealworms you can get at the store, at any bird, bird food store. Oh, red-breasted nuthatch on the suet. Oh, he got a nice chunk. And you can see I put the cardboard in the back of the, that to keep the woodpeckers from staying on the backside and coming around to the front. Um, but the mealworms are really good at attracting bluebirds. And if you happen to live in good bluebird habitat, which is kind of the edge of meadow with scattered trees and things, you can attract them to your feeder sometimes. Unfortunately, we've not, we have them breeding here in the spring and summer, but we have not attracted them in the winter to our feeder uh, yet. Hopefully we do. I would love to be able to have them regularly visiting our feeders. So I'm a little jealous, I have to admit. Um, we've got Honolulu Blue Sparty. Hi, Curtis. Matt Lewandowski. Hey, Matt. <laughs> I, love the, I love the name there. Really nice to hear from you. Thanks for joining us. Um, Joe says we have a lot of house finches too. We've not seen any house finches here this morning, but they are often, uh, often a visitor at our feeders, especially the number eight feeder. So watch the number eight. We may catch a house finch before too long. Um, good morning. Oh, Maya says, uh, good morning. I'm here from your career talk presentation on Thursday. Oh, excellent. Thank you so much. Um, I, it was nice to meet you after the presentation too. So nice shout out to, to Maya. Um, I'm so happy to be starting my morning off with some birds. Excellent. I love to hear it. Maya was, uh, she's a student at GVSU. And on Thursday, I was there talking to the natural resource management class, uh, a career presentation, kind of talking about my career my, um, and, and uh, my pursuits and things and how that relates to them as they're trying to figure things out for themselves in college and what career choices they're making. So I always love doing that presentation. It's a lot of fun for me. And uh, there were about 65 students um, uh, in person and online um, for that presentation. So I hope that can be a, a help to you, Maya. And thank you for stopping to say hello afterwards and expressing your interest in birds and that you were going to join us this morning. Good to see you out there. Todd Carlson, uh, we put down cracked corn to keep squirrels out of our feeders but it has also attracted mallards. <laughs> Usually only a few, but sometimes up to 20. Wow. wow. Should we be worried about disease? You know, I'm not sure about the ducks and disease at the feeders. That's a good question. I, I really can't speak much to that, but um, I would say it's kind of unique to have ducks at your feeder in the winter. You must be near open water. <laughs> you must be open. Oh, there is a hairy woodpecker. We got a hairy woodpecker now on the on the woodpecker tree. Yeah. Is that susceptible to the avian flu? Avian, uh, I want to say more. I don't know about avian flu or uh, I know botulism can go into it with ducks, but that's that's whether or not they're feeding at feeders. I don't know that feed, being at feeders increases disease transmission for ducks or not because they're always together. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why diseases go through ducks quite readily is because they're feeding together. You have it on the hairy there, Rick? Oh, sorry. I, I was a little ahead of the game there. I switched it over and you weren't focused. Sorry. Making you look bad there, Rick. 
I'm going to put it on here so that you can at least see. There's a hairy woodpecker, even if it's not in focus. There's a hairy woodpecker out there, okay? <laughs> Cindy is giving some good encouragement to Rick here by saying she, says she appreciates seeing the experts have the birds out of focus because she has that same problem a lot of the time. <laughs> so... Um, Barb is saying bluebirds come to our suet feeder and bird bath. For some reason, they didn't eat mealworms when we had them. Interesting. I've, I've heard other people say that they will come into bird baths regularly too. Um, interesting that they didn't find the mealworms at the same time. Um, but uh, glad you're getting to see them anyways. And suet. Yes, they will eat suet too. Oh, we got the downy woodpeckers at number five here just going at it. They were... Definitely being territorial. <laughs> Flaring there. Snowy owl? Yes. Um, not recently, but there have been some scattered reports of them up in the Coopersville area and uh, just southeast of here between here and Zealand uh, on the farm country. Not seen them in a while, but uh, they, they move around quite a bit too. So the question was, any snowy owls? Oh, red pole on upper left. Oh, and I missed your comment. Check green feeder for red pole. Check green feeder for red pole. The number eight feeder? Oh, shoot. And I missed, there was a red pole out there and I missed it. They spotted it online. Red bellied on behind number five? <laughs> <laughs> number two okay here's the here's what we're talking about there's a downy woodpecker on the front but there's a red-bellied woodpecker on the back come back around come on mr red belly he's, he's on the back side of this feeder there he is nice we got a blue jay calling too Red pole just left. Oh. At first I was saying you meant left left side of the feeder. <laughs> but we'll be watching. Was it on the number was it on the number four feeder? That that one where all the goldfinches are? Was he on the feeder in the upper left there, Carl and Judy? Yeah, there, there may have been something that passed by because, yeah, the, the woodpeckers are frozen on the feeder out there. You can see the downy in the lower left just sitting absolutely still. There's a hairy on the tree back there that's sitting still, too. Is there a hawk out there? Yeah, the squirrels are, too. I'm going to peek out the window here and look up. We've been having regular visits from uh, an immature Cooper's hawk. We had it twice come by yesterday when we were setting up, didn't we, Rick? I think it was twice. Yep, there's a red-bellied, a hairy, and a downy all still on the trees and on the feeder here. Okay, and I got... Carl saying, Carl and Judy saying, yes, it was on the number four feeder. So we'll watch the number four feeder when the birds come back in. The red pole, that's where it was. And Barb says, yes, the red pole has been there several times on upper left. <laughs> I love it. The people online are seeing the bird and we're missing it entirely here in person. So take it, take a look at the one to the left to the left uh, above number six there, Rick. There's there's a bird there's another downy woodpecker just to the to the side of the one that's on the suet feeder, and Rick is getting it in the camera here. Look at that, just sitting so still. The squirrels have kind of gone off into the brush. It looks like. Oh yeah, there's there's one there. He was kind of hidden from me. Yeah. 
That's pretty neat to see, but that is, so movement attracts attention to predators. So if they sit still, that reduces the chance that the predator, when it comes by, is going to actually see them. So. To number what, number four? There we go. Okay, we've got 29 people out there and I think I saw it go up over 30 for a little bit. So we've got quite a few viewers online. I love to see that, that we've got that much engagement going on. Uh, no, okay. Cindy was checking at the window in the great room there and wasn't seeing anything. It may have given a flyby, but if they're sitting so still, it may be in the tree like above the building or something here where we just can't see it. When they're, when they're like this, it's a pretty, like, it's a legit threat. Because if it's a false alarm, they'll go back about their business pretty quickly. There's a junco behind number eight. We haven't mentioned the juncos before. There he flies up. Downey looks pretty stressed. Must be predator close by. Yeah, you bet it is. Yeah. The Blue Jay is coming in. Is the Blue Jay declaring all clear? Maybe the Blue Jay is declaring all clear. So... So I am going to switch it to number two here for a second. No, not number two. Number, not number one either. Hi. Number three. Third time's a charm. Um, I wanted to show you this. Uh, there's a red pole. You can see the common red pole picture here. This is what we're looking for on feeder on the feeder number four. You can see the black, black little face patch at the base of the yellow bill with a red patch on the top of the head there. Um, more frosty colored than than a, a pine siskin, which you also see on this page. And if we get any of these others, that would be just cherry on top. Of course, evening grosbeak and white wing crossbills and red crossbills are even rarer. I will say this though, white wing crossbills have been sighted in Allegan County already this winter. They are on the loose, um, on the loose. They're, <laughs> they're, they're erupting into our area. It was back in 2011, 2012, I think we had an eruption of them. And this, this year, they're starting to build in some numbers in areas. So be looking at spruce groves. Uh, cemeteries are a good place to look at, for them because there's a lot of uh, Norway spruces. Um, look at the cones on the top. You might just run into them. Um, so you never know. White wing crossbills, something to be on the lookout for out there. Anybody out there seen a, a white wing crossbill this year? I went up to the UP in uh, December and I didn't even get to see a white wing crossbill. I was looking for them, but didn't get to see them. There's a chickadee in behind number eight. Haven't seen many chickadees this morning. Well, I got to keep people entertained. I got to, you know, switch to another slide or something, you know. Uh, <laughs> oh, I should, I should do this. Can I ask a question? Yes, you absolutely can. can. Um, two, two questions. One, I have eight sewers and I have one uh, in, a, in a cage, a double, big double wide sewer cage, and I've had it shut with a twisty tie around it. And something, I assume squirrels, are undoing the twisty tie and, like, and opening the cage and taking all the sewer. Wow. The second thing is I bought a, in, in, I couldn't get down to Zealand, so I grabbed some on-sale gourmet seed that had peanuts in it. I will never do that again. <laughs> and it was a mix and put it in my big feeder that I won here last year. And it, um, the blue jays came in because there were just a few peanuts in this mix 
and they sat at the edge of all four sides of this, and they would flip <laughs> off the seed until they got a peanut, and then they flip <laughs> off. Yep. And they yep. emptied yep. that feeder in 90 minutes. Wow. Yes. Wow. So brown, yep. brown feeders were thrilled, but yep. these, these guys they emptied so the whole thing. It is one, awesome. yeah. So Cindy, Cindy has a couple of comments. One about the suet feeder, uh, double wide suet feeder that uh, had a, she used a twist tie to keep it shut, but something was getting in and something was pulling that off, untwisting it. I'm imagining that they were grabbing it and just kind of stripping it off and not actually untwisting it. That would be pretty hard. <laughs> You'd have to have some opposable thumbs. Maybe a raccoon would be, you know, good enough at that. But interesting. So what I use on the feeder out here, number five, is it's just a chain with a clip on it. Just one of those little uh, press with your thumb clips. And you just stretch it far enough so that it can't open the door. That seems to work really well, actually. Um, so yeah, keeping your suet safe from things that you don't want to eat, uh, that you don't want eating it. It looks like the, the, uh, the woodpeckers and the chickadees are coming in now too. Things are starting to, the tension is, is less. There was a tip mouse that came in. There's a chickadee now on number one. There, there's another chickadee on number one. Um, the other thing you were saying was um, the mixed seeds. So yeah, just like the, the cheap mixed seeds you can get at the store that have all the milo and the millet and then the cracked corn and the, and the black oil sunflower seeds, they'll t the birds will toss everything except for grabbing the black oil sunflower seeds. And people say, well, why do I go through my food so fast? It's because they're tossing everything else and they're going for that. Well, Cindy was saying that she had it, had a mixture with peanuts in it and everything but the peanuts was getting tossed. So peanuts are a favorite. The way I feed peanuts are I put them in the mix on the tray feeder of number one. And that's a daily. I get, I get that too and I have them start on the ground, but they wanted more and I'm going to that. Interesting. She said she had them in a tray, too, and on the ground, but they were still going to the feeder and doing it. And you can see there went the tufted titmouse with a peanut in its beak. The titmice love the peanuts. The blue jays love the peanuts. They're a little bit big for the chickadees, um, but uh, a lot of fun. That's the only place that I put the peanuts. Um, I have used peanuts in a mix for the number four feeder over here, the, the green-capped feeder uh, where all the siskins and, and goldfinches go. But what happens is, the peanuts can't fit through that mesh. And so, so everything else gets eaten. And then there's a load of peanuts at the bottom that they can't, that they can't pull out. <laughs> so, so the feed that we put in number four is just straight up uh, sunflower hearts, the whole sunflower heart. They have them at, at DeBrine there. You can get a 50 pound bag if you want. Um, but uh, the, the whole sunflower hearts has been what these birds have been going nuts for, literally nuts for. So, and looking at here, Carl and Judy are saying they had white winged crossbills in Allegan County. They went a flock of 30 with some nice photo ops. Oh, excellent. That's great. I, I look forward to seeing some of those photos, but not on the mug if it was Allegan County, Carl and Judy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I can imagine you're, you're chuckling to that one. Um, Doug Kuiper says, I have had two Cooper's Hawks this morning at our residence, coffee with the birds. <laughs> so Doug Kuiper is our mug club photo contest winner, and he's watching online. Welcome, Doug. And June, I imagine, is there with you, too. Uh, she was the winner a couple of years prior to this, too, with the Oriole uh, mug. And uh, they have a couple of Cooper's Hawks at their feeder this morning. So, so not a whole lot of other birds, then? <laughs> I see Carl and Judy say, ha ha. <laughs> uh, that's what this is about. It's about having fun. It's about being, being friendly with each other and just having a good time. And that's what we like to do for this program. And, and uh, hopefully it's enjoyable for you too. I'm seeing it's already 1019. That doesn't mean I have to cut the live stream right away, but I am going to be working my way toward that pretty quickly, but not before... At 10.20, my video goes live, and I'm going to put that link in the uh, comments here so that you all can uh, link directly to the video presentation of the birding tidbits, birding story. It's called 
ptarmigan again. And uh, you'll see why when you watch the video. It's about a 13, 13 and a half minute video. And then we'll be doing a live presentation in the other room as well. Um, so if you're here in person, you can watch that presentation in person. And you can also watch it as a video later on if you want to revisit that story. It is now 1020, which means I should have my video live. And I'm going to try to get that link for you. If I can, it's not showing up yet. Got to give it a minute. I might have to find it another way. If somebody out there, actually, that may help out. I can't. I'm refreshing my YouTube page. But if somebody out there actually has that link on your email easy, I can't do it easy because I'm on the computer that has you all on it. So I can't get to my email and things real easily. Actually, well, no, I can't. I'm going to take that back. So is there anybody out there that can help me out with that link? I'm so embarrassed here. I can't get the, uh, the video to pull up on my, on my page here. Oh, maybe I can. Hold on. Ah, I do have it now. Hold on. Hold your horses, and I will get this video link to you. Here it comes. So you don't have to leave us yet, but click click this link in the uh, in the comments. And it'll take you to the Birding Tidbits presentation, uh, Tarmigan again. Um, thank you. Uh, let's see. Oh, Denise Porter. Good morning. We have Junkos, Nuthatches, and a Red-Bellied Woodpecker joining from Kentwood, too. Excellent. Welcome. Glad you could join us, Denise. And Martin Cap Camp says uh, this was a really nice event. Well, thank you. Thank, thank you very much for joining. And with that, I am going to wrap this up. Um, and... Uh, Sadly, I wish I could kind of stay on for a little while longer, but, but uh, I'm so glad that you all could join this morning. I hope you enjoy the presentation, um, and I hope to see you back here for the final Coffee with the Birds of the Season on March 12th. If you are not signed up for to receive emails, um, I'm going to pull that up, how you can get on. Yep, hold on one second. I am going to get you another link here. If you are not signed up to get on the emails or want to see more information about uh, birds and birding for Ottawa County, this link here will get you to it. Um, when you go to that website, um, just click on the sign up here. It says stay connected. Click on the sign up here and sign your email address up and you'll receive more updated emails um, on Coffee with the Birds and a whole lot of other things. But it's the best way to stay connected to Coffee with the Birds in particular. Um, and when you go to that website, you can also click on the Coffee with the Birds link. And that'll link you to a page that has all the links to all of the events that we've had this year, all of the videos that we've had this year, of the presentations and things. So it's your hub for information on this program and a whole lot more. So please do check it out. Uh, Pam says, thank you, crew, for an awesome morning sharing our love for birds. Thank you for the comment, Pam. And Kelly says, thanks again. Great tidbits. Oh, excellent. Thank you, Kelly. So with that, I'm going to cut my, my audio and I'll leave it up to Rick if he wants to let it go for a little bit while he's, uh, he's going to have to start uh, tearing things down. But I want to say just a heartfelt thank you for joining this morning. And if you have any comments, suggestions, um, things you like, things that could work a little better a different way, let us know. Uh, you can email us at uh, uh, ocparks at miottawa.org. 
You can find an email address also on the website there, ocparks at miottawa.org, and we'd love to hear from you and how we can serve you better. So thank you. Cheers to all of you uh, in the Mug Club, and uh, we will see you again next month uh, on March the 12th. So stay tuned. Take care.